Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us today. As always, you can contact us at our website at www.lenessafarms.com. Send us an email at customerservice at lenessafarms.com or give us a call or a text at the number listed below. Today we're kicking off our new small farm knowledge series talking about basic sheep terms and definitions. We greatly appreciate your feedback. As a matter of fact, these videos are made based on customer feedback. So if you have questions, please let us know. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to give us a thumbs up. Without further delay, let's get started talking about sheep terms and definitions. So I was at a producer's house this morning picking up some livestock. He's one of the individuals that I co-op with and he raises pigs and I primarily raise sheep and goats and a few other animals, but basically sheep and goats. And we started talking shop as we often do and I started throwing out some terms about my sheep and I could tell by the look on his face that he had no idea what I was talking about. And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this before, like you're talking to somebody about something that you're passionate about and all of a sudden you come to the realization that you have completely lost them in your jargon and they have no clue what you're talking about. Now you know most people will be friendly and they don't want to interrupt you or it's embarrassing to them because they don't want you to know what uh, that they don't know what you're talking about so uh, you know it came to came to me this afternoon I thought man I really need to make a video uh, and talk about some of these basic terms uh, because a lot of you are watching our videos regarding sheep regarding goats and we're using these terms and you may not know what we're talking about so if I could go back in time I technically should have made this video a long time ago but I digress, I didn't, and so here we are. So what I've done is I've compiled a list of basic terms that I think would be important for you to know, and I'm going to go through them. I've even put them in alphabetical order. So this should be a rather short video. We'll go through these and uh, kind of talk about them. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm sure it's a work in progress. We can always add more information to the list. Uh, or if you see anything that you think might be wrong, we can always take something away. So without further delay, let's get started. Uh, the first thing uh, is banding. Banding is the use of rubber bands. Uh, we use what's called a banding tool and we use these rubber bands for castration or docking. Uh, simply put during the lambing season you may hear somebody say yeah I was banding my lambs and that's essentially what they're talking about they applied that band to the tail for docking or they applied it uh, to the testicles for castration another term you might hear is barren uh, barren is a term that we use to describe ewes that have not conceived uh, after um, being mated with a male and they're usually sold as a result body condition score uh, body condition score is a physical assessment of your sheep uh, and it's found by pressing your hand over and around the backbone and the loin and alongside the ribs. Uh, the score given is usually rated 1 to 5 with 1 being the thinnest and 5 being the fattest. Now at breeding time this is really important because uh, at breeding time we want them to have a very specific body condition score. Um, you should generally score between 2 and 5 at time of breeding and rams should score between 3.5 and 4. Bolus. Uh, bolus is an ob object uh, generally put in the mouth um, that we use a, what's called a bolus gun uh, to apply and generally speaking a bolus is, is just a large quantity of something given to the animal. It can either uh, be given to them in a, in a big pill form um, or it can be like a large amount of liquid given to them at one time. Generally speaking, if it's a pill, we would refer to it as a bolus and if it were liquid, we would refer to it as a drench, um, but we will uh, get into that later. Broken mouthed. Uh, this is a common term you might hear from individuals that are selling a lamb cheap. Um, and it is uh, an older sheep. This is a sheep that has lost or broken some of its teeth uh, and it's generally after the age of six. A K 
Cade. A Cade, uh, this is more of a term that you might hear uh, in Britain, but we use it here in the United States as well. A Cade is an orphan lamb that has been hand reared by a farmer uh, using milk. Uh, this is what you might also hear uh, termed as a bottle baby. Cast. A cast is a sheep that's on its back and a unable to get up again unassisted and uh, yeah no kidding you need to watch your sheep especially if you've got them out on pasture because you can get a cast sheep uh, some sheep depending on their size and their structure once they go on their back they cannot uh, right themselves so this is a serious problem in some places uh, cast you this is an older breeding you uh, which is sold off of the farm um, where uh, maybe you've got it on let's say pasture or something where it's having to work a little bit harder uh, we would move a cast you a cast you would be an older you that's moved into the barn somewhere where it doesn't have to work as hard to get food um, we're going to try to make life a little bit easier for them creep feeding uh, creep feeding is something that we do with babies when they're born um, it is a provision of uh, supplemental food that we give to weaning lambs. We have a special area usually that is set up for creep feeding. It is a special pen that only the little lambs can get into and the adults can't get into. And we will continue to feed out of this creep until uh, the lambs are weaned and a little bit bigger. Okay, crutching. Uh, crutching is the removal of wool from around the tail and between the back legs of sheep. Generally speaking, at least on our farm, we crutch our ewes prior to lambing. Um, it just cleans them up, cleans up their backside, and we also crutch the front side of their legs so there's no, um, there's no like dags or anything hanging down. Um, nothing in the way, nothing that's going to cause the baby to get an infection or nothing that's going to prevent the baby from finding the tit uh, when they're trying to uh, nurse off of mom. Cud. Uh, cud is just uh, food that's been regurgitated back up to be chewed again. Uh, during the middle of the afternoon or the middle of the day you might go out and see your sheep laying down and they're chewing away and they're basically chewing on their cud. Cull you. Uh, a cull you is a you that's reached the end of its breeding life. Usually because of old age, sometimes due to health problems. Uh, the basic thing that you need to know is cull ewes are sold as mutton. Uh, mutton is older meat. Um, they can also uh, be traded. Some people want to fatten them up. Uh, but a cull you is essentially an old you that you're getting rid of. Dags. Uh, dags, these are. Uh, like the little dingleberries that you see on the back of sheep. It's clumps of dried poop uh, stuck to the wool of sheep. And that's why we crutch. Um, you, you heard me use that term when I said crutching. And, and that's why we crutch. Because if you don't cut the wool in a timely manner, you're going to get poop in the wool and it'll hang down like little Christmas ornaments. And uh, we call those dags. A dam. A dam, D-A-M. That's a mother. A uh, simple word for... Uh, for a mama sheep. Dock, uh, docking, that's uh, removal of the tail. And you can watch some of our special videos that, that uh, deal specifically with docking. Drench, something that we talked about before. This is your liquid oral veterinary medicine. Um, our worming uh, medicine is generally a drench. That's that large uh, liquid bolus that we're giving uh, via the mouth. Uh, dressing percentage. Uh, this is the percentage of the animal that ends up as a carcass. So that's to say once the animal is slaughtered um, and the wool is taken off and the entrails are taken out, what is the percentage of the animal that's left um, after they've been cleaned? Ear tag, exactly what it sounds like. It's just a plastic or metal tag that's in the ear. You may hear it referred to as a scrappy ID tag. Even sometimes if it doesn't have a scrappy number on it, they refer to it as a scrappy ID tag or a scrappy tag. Um, that is uh, just an identifying marker. Most uh, sheep have plastic ear tags on large farms. Some people tattoo. Uh, in the goat world, you see a lot more tattooing than you do in the sheep world. A U, um, E W E U. Uh, is an adult female sheep of any breed um, and that's just your female 
uh, mama sheep. Fat lambs, this is a term that you hear a lot. Um, somebody says, hey, I'm taking a bunch of fat lambs to the market. Fat lambs is a traditional term for lambs that are finished and ready for slaughter. Um, they're heavy enough to enter the food chain, um, depending on the time of year. So, you know, going into Easter time, our fat lambs are about 70, 75 pounds. Uh, fleece. Uh, that's the wool that covers the sheep flock. That's our group of sheep. Flushing. Ah, this is a good one. Uh, flushing is providing extra nutrients and feed a few weeks before mating to improve fertility. And I really want to make a video on this, and I think I'm going to now that I, I see this. Gives me a good idea. So basically, when we're going into breeding season, we feed our ewes extra food. Um, and it helps them to ovulate better and that increases our chances of having twins or triplets as opposed to singles. And we also want to heavy feed our rams as well because they lose a lot of weight during breeding. Fly strike. Uh, fly strike is an infestation of the wool uh, skin and eventually the flesh with uh, blowfly or botfly maggots. Um, if you don't keep your animals clean, they get a bunch of poop in, in the wool, flies can come and lay eggs in the wool and those eggs hatch into maggots and the maggots can actually eat into the animal and kill them. Um, a good sign of fly strike is if you were to go out to a pasture and you see a sheep sitting down like a dog like sitting on their bottom like a dog would sit if it was begging for food, that is a good sign that the sheep has fly strike and you definitely need to check them out. This is the number one reason why we dock tails, why we band our tails, um, to prevent getting those dags and getting fly strike. Foot rot. Uh, foot rot is a painful infectious uh, bacteria of the hoof. Um, between the toes, if you were to look at sheep, they've got a cloven hoof. That is to say they've kind of got a toenail on each side. And then in the middle, there's this fleshy area. Foot rot tends to affect that area and can basically eat their foot away. And that's something that you definitely want to pay attention for if you're on um, moist or damp ground. Uh, a heft. A heft is an area of land occupied by a flock. Um, believe it or not, sheep tend to know their heft. Uh, even if it doesn't have physical boundaries and don't tend to stray away from it. Um, hef term, it's a traditional term used in the uplands of the UK. Um, not so much here in the US. Um, a hog or a hogette, that's a hog with two G's. Um, this term is more, you, you hear it in certain parts of the US more than you hear it in others. So a hog is a lamb that is getting past one year of age. Um, hogs can be male or female and are usually destined for slaughter. Although those farmers in some places uh, will call uh, ewe lambs selected for breeding uh, hogs as well. Hybrid vigor. Uh, hybrid vigor is a genetic phenomenon from crossbreeding which results in an increase in characteristics, uh, the good characteristics like size, growth rate, fertility, um, and all those good things. It's a natural occurrence uh, that's utilized in all types of agriculture and all types of animal uh, breeding, as well as crops. Um, you can read, we have a very good article about genetics on our website at lennisfarms.com. I would highly suggest you read that. It's a three-part series. Um, in lamb, uh, this is a term for a pregnant ewe, uh, kind of like we say with, with uh, adult uh, human females, we say they're with child. Uh, in uh, the sheep world, we refer to it as in lamb. Uh, lactation, I think we all know what that is. It's a period of time where the ewe is producing milk. A lamb, uh, you would think this is, is easy, but it, it's really not. A lamb is both sexes of sheep up to one year old. Um, and so up to one year, you would either hear them referred to generally as a ewe lamb or a ram lamb, depending on the sex. Lambing, um, I'm guilty of this one a lot. I talk to non-sheep people and I'm like, yeah, we're lambing right now. Uh, basically, that is the time period when a flock of sheep tends to be giving birth. Um, so if someone says they're lambing, that means that their ewes are actively having 
uh, babies. Uh, with that in mind, there's also what's called lambing percentage, and that's what someone will tell you if they're like, yeah, my lambing percentage is 150% um, or 200%. It's how many lambs are produced per ewe. So if all of your ewes have a single baby without any exceptions, you have had 100% lambing percentage. Um, if you have 200, then obviously every you was having two babies. Um, losses are counted into this uh, percentage. Lanolin. So this is the natural grease that's found in wool. For those of you that have never actually laid hands on a sheep before, a wool sheep that is, if you were to run your hand through the wool on a sheep, your hand gets this lotiony kind of greasy feeling to it and that's the lanolin. Uh, the lanolin is what keeps sheep waterproof. Um, if it weren't for the lanolin you can only imagine uh, if you can think about ever going out in the rain or getting wet with a wool sweater on it adds about a hundred pounds to you and it is not very pleasant so you can imagine how crappy a sheep's life would be if they weren't waterproof and the lanolin is what does that. Mastitis. Uh, this is an infection of the mammary glands uh, and it causes really bad inflammation. This is probably one of the number one infections that you see um, on our moms uh, when they're nursing babies. Mule. Uh, a mule is a crossbred sheep fathered generally by a long wool breed. Um, so overseas especially you'll hear certain ones uh, certain sheep referred to as like a scotch mule or a welsh mule this is is essentially a crossbred um musing i i don't really see this happen here in in uh, the states very often i i might be ignorant to this I, it's traditionally used in australia this is cutting off uh, physically cutting off wrinkles uh, in the crutch of merino sheep and some of these other really um, wrinkly sheep to prevent fly strike. Uh, you don't see it too much here. Mutton. Uh, meat from a sheep that's older, uh, generally, some people will say a year old, I'm going to say over two years old. Um, it's older than a lamb and it has a different taste and texture. Uh, Mutton is usually produced by ewes that have reached the end of their production life, um, but it's generally uh, used to describe any sheep meat older than two years old. It is gamey. Um, I don't care for it. Some people like it, but uh, just know there is a distinct difference in taste between lamb and mutton. They are not the same. So if you've ever had mutton and you're like, oh my god, that was the worst thing I've ever had in my life, please don't hold it against regular old lamb meat. Two completely different tastes, uh, two completely different things. Um, let's see, polled. Uh, this is a good one. This is without horns. So some sheep breeds are what we would call naturally polled, um, like a some of it's even in the name. So like a polled Dorset, they do not have horns as opposed to the regular Dorset, which does. Um, a lot of breeds naturally don't have horns, and again, we refer to that as polled. Poron. Uh, poron is an externally applied medicine, usually along the back line of a freshly shorn sheep to control lice or other parasites. Uh, purebred. This is a sheep that has a mother and a father of the same breed. Um, just like you would see with like an AKC registered dog, we have registered sheep, we have sheep associations that you can get paperwork. Um, yeah, that pretty much uh, explains itself a rattle uh, a rattle is a device strapped to the chest of a ram uh, or a buck and it's got a colored chalk in it generally or, a, or like a large grease crayon and what happens is, is when that ram gets up on the back of a ewe to breed her he'll put this big colored mark on her back and that's the way that we can tell uh, when our ewes have been successfully bred by the ram. He jumps up on them and he leaves that mark and then we can go out day by day and keep track of them, uh, usually by utilizing their ear tags and then we have a pretty good idea of when they're going to lamb. Uh, let's see, shearing, we know about that. Sheepdog, wait, I think we know about that. Sire, um, that is a term uh, used to refer to the father. Um, 
So in our case, we generally use one or two sires per year. Um, and so you may hear someone say, uh, he's a, uh, he's my breed sire or he's the sire for, uh, this group. Stun, uh, this is the process uh, that they use when they take uh, sheep into slaughter. It's an electrical tool called a stunner. Um, it's different than a bolt gun. A bolt gun was kind of the older way that they would do it. Uh, stunning is a process where they just basically shock them in it and it knocks them out. A teaser, this is a good one. A teaser is a ram that is infertile um, but placed among the ewes to encourage the onset of estrus. So, a lot of people use teaser rams and the way that this works is uh, when you have a large group of ewes that haven't bred yet you take a male that's not fertile um, but he's still intact that is saying he's still got his nuts on him and you put him out there and he will chase the ewes around and they will smell him and it will cause the ewes uh, to go into estrus. Once they go into estrus after a certain amount of time we tend to pull this teaser ram out and then put the uh, real breeding ram in. So the question might be, well, why in the world would you do this? Well, the reason we do this is because from the time you introduce the male to the time that the ewes are actually in estrus um, could be a week or a couple weeks or maybe even longer. And this wears the ram out. Uh, rams are horrible about not eating, not drinking, not taking care of themselves uh, when breeding season comes along. And this helps to keep our rams healthy and strong um, by using a teaser in place of the actual ram. A tup. Uh, a tup is a male sheep, also known as a ram. Um, tupping, this is when a ram mates with a ewe. Uh, weaning, that's when we pull our lambs off of moms or the moms naturally wean them on different farms and different operations weaning occurs at different times some people wean at eight weeks here on our farm we wean at 16 weeks um, it just depends weather uh, not spelled like a weather uh, person that you see on the news this is w-e-t-h-e-r a weather is a male lamb that has been castrated um, this term is used with sheep and goats alike um, and this is always something that we do very very early um, when we castrate lambs it's usually done at the same time as tail docking it is not something that we do later in life um, a yearling this is a sheep that's at least a year old but younger than uh, two years old so we go lamb and then we are a yearling and then after that we're usually referring to them as mutton so a to z those are the terms that i think are important for you to know uh, if you have anything you want to add to it or take away from it please let me know Oh, we sincerely appreciate you watching this video today. I hope you learned something new and interesting. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Lanessa underscore farms. If you have questions, send us an email, give us a call, send us a text. We make these videos just for you. Thanks for watching and we will see you very soon.